Hi everyone, welcome to my channel Pemitaka and I am Subhash Chandra. In today's video, we are going to discuss about one of the rarest topic and the topic is nothing but vibration, vibration in piping. So why do I wanted to discuss about this topic? That is because this is one of the most critical issue in piping system which needs to be addressed without any delay, which has to be given more priority and importance. So we will discuss about this in detail. So without uh, wasting your time, let's get started. And uh, before getting into the subject, those who do not know about the piping uh, course that I've launched in my website with pemidaka.com, this is about pipe routing for oil and gas. So the intent of the course is to uh, educate you about the pipe routing. And that is because this uh, pipe routing is one of the most expected skill across the world. Even if you go to any countries, the first primary skill that uh, that is expected from the piping design engineers is to know about the pipe routing. I will give you the link of this particular course in the video description. You can go and check it and you can go through the preview videos of this uh, soft, I mean uh, this course so that you will be able to understand the intent and the content of the course actually. Now let's get started. Piping vibration. So first uh, we will see what are the topics that I'm going to cover in this video. So we are going to discuss about the concept and we are going to discuss about the impact and then the root causes and then we will discuss about the mitigation plan so that you will understand the how the where it starts and what are the root causes and how do we have to solve it actually. This is going to be really really interesting actually those who are into piping uh, engineering domain uh, I know that many people don't get an opportunity to um, uh, experience such uh, cases actually and this is going to be an eye opener for you. So let's get started. First, let's understand what is vibration in piping is about. It is nothing but a cyclical displacement of piping in a constant and varied frequency. So basically when a vibration occurs, it is going to vibrate with respect to some frequency actually. So I will uh, explain you uh, how this is going to uh, be related with respect to the displacement and frequency actually in the next slide. So you have to understand in such a way that whatever movement that comes uh, with respect to the vibration, it is going to be recorded with respect to the frequency actually. So now let's see, uh, now let's go to the real time example. Let's imagine you have a pipe and this pipe is vibrating. So it will vibrate on both the sides, on either side of the pipes. So which is going to give a displacement D on either side of the pipe actually. So this is recorded basically in a graph with respect to the displacement and the frequency. So frequency is generally recorded in hertz. So hertz per second. So now I'll show you the graph actually. So this is how it works actually. If the pipe moves up and down, this will be considered as one particular cycle. If this is, I mean, uh, you can understand the point starts from over here and it goes, um, then it goes up and then it comes to the median line then goes down and comes back to the median line. So this is known as one cycle. So if um, one cycle occurs in a second, which is known as one third cycle. So because uh, sometimes what happens uh, due to the velocity of this uh, vibration, there may be more number of cycles within the within one second. So generally, if um, uh, the, the vibrations are too high, it is recorded in terms of hertz. So let's imagine that you have uh, 8 hertz, which means so 8 number of cycles within 1 second actually. So this is how it has to be. So you don't have to um, get into too much uh, of uh, details actually. Try to understand in this way that uh, the pipe moves uh, or laterally or uh, up and down because the pipe could move either way, right? So it can move laterally and also it can move up and down actually. So on either sides actually. Uh, the pipe, the vibration is going to be recorded with respect to the frequency. So the number of cycles are recorded with respect to hertz actually. So and this number of cycle and the displacement will be traced. If the displacement is more, the graph will be more. I mean this uh, point, I mean this point is going to be little more elevated if the displacement is more because this is the displacement uh, in, uh, uh, I mean y axis and then uh, frequency in the um, uh, x axis. Now let's go to the next slide actually. So the next topic is that, so I hope that you have understand the simple concept. Simple concept is nothing but uh, the pipe moves up and down and it is uh, recorded with respect to the displacement and frequency. Frequency is the uh, scale to measure the vibration. Okay. 
Now we have to understand what is the impact. So we, we are talking about a lot of things actually, but what is the impact actually? Is it really going to be serious? Let's understand. Let's go one by one. First, let me tell you the first very important factor why we have to give importance to the vibration is that it is going to kill the material life. You can imagine if the material life of the piping system goes down, there is a heavy threat and there is a uh, potential uh, possibilities of accidents and uh, the life of the plant goes down. So this is one of the very important uh, factor with why we have to give an importance to vibration. So now let's go to the second one actually. Second one is that if you are not going to address the vibration, it can lead to generate a crack in the well joints. You can um, uh, imagine that if uh, this is the kind of the crack is going to propagate in piping because of vibration, then what would happen if there is a toxic gases or toxic fluids uh, within the line actually. So this is one of the another uh, very, um, uh, I mean, important uh, impact of vibration in piping. Now let's go to the second one, structural failure. See if there is a bunch of lines in the pipe rack. Imagine this is the pipe racks and you have a bunch of lines over here. And if all of the lines is going to vibrate and this is going to shake the entire structure and the structure is going to collapse and it further it will cause the huge disasters in the plant, in the working plant. It may damage the persons, it may damage the infrastructure. So vibration has this impact. That is what I want you to understand actually. Now let's go to the next one. Equipment failure because the piping is connected to uh, an equipment like pressure vessels, pumps, compressors or any kind of an equipment you can take. So if the piping is going to vibrate, keep on vibration, this would crack the, uh, the I mean the nozzle joints and it would um, uh, leads to the crack in the equipment. Uh, any kind of, it, it could be a pressure vessels or it could be a non-pressure vessel equipment also, but uh, vibration can lead to an equipment failure. That is, uh, it's one of the most costlier um, replacement because equipment cost is much high in piping, right? So we have to address this without any delay. So now let's go to the next one actually. So the panicking noise, see what happens is that in, when in case of uh, noise, uh, I mean in case, in case of vibration, uh, almost all of the piping is going to vibrate and this is gonna um, sure, this is going to have the sheerness with uh, the structures and nearby piping, some points of uh, and some stages of uh, plant what happens, this is going to create a lot of noise and this noise is going to be really panicking actually. So this will create such a situation that you have to run away immediately. And uh, <clears throat> this will, um, what do you call it, give you a kind of a threat basically. So it is really, really important to address uh, the vibration in the piping. So this is what the impact is all about actually. Now let's go to the, the, the final one actually. The final one is that, See, right now I have explained to you about uh, different uh, impacts actually, but we also have to understand that there must be an cumulative impact. Cumulative impact in the sense, it is it, the vibration could uh, uh, loosen the bolts, vibration could uh, uh, create uh, leaks in the flanges actually. And uh, if uh, the overall material, uh, I mean the life of material is going to go down actually, then definitely there will be a threat. You do not know from where uh, the, the leak would uh, propagate and where there would be a, uh, a blast, where there would be uh, uh, explosion. So there could be a cumulative impact. So that cannot be uh, determined. So vibration is one of the most critical thing which needs to be addressed immediately without any delay actually. So now let's go to the cause and the scenarios. So one of the main causes that vibration source. So we have to identify the vibration source. Now I will list down the vibration source so that you will be able to understand why and from where this vibrations generally occurs actually because vibration source is the very important item that creates a vibration. If you eliminate the vibration source, definitely you will not have any vibration in the piping. Let's get started. The first one is that rotary equipments. So what are rotary equipments? Pumps, compressors and turbines. So these are rotary equipments. So uh, if you can find any other equipments other than these three also needs to be included because rotary equipments generally uh, generates a vibration because of the rotary item which is rotor within the equipment. And uh, this vibrations slowly gets transferred to the piping system. If piping systems are not supported to handle this vibration, 
definitely there will be a failure definitely there will be uh, the damage in the piping so this is one of the the first primary source of vibration now let's go to the second one the flow turbulence see we have to understand this uh, in almost all the piping there is a flow the flow is continuous the flow is um, uh, operating i mean uh, running uh, through the piping uh, in 24 bar 7 actually so there will be a flow turbulence so the flow turbulence uh, could be uh, from various reasons uh, the one is that uh, the velocity of the fluid is more or um, there could be a lot of change in direction such as the t's bands and everything which is not properly supported uh, if the line is straight, hopefully you may not experience uh, uh, more um, vibration. But in piping, we cannot have the line straight and all the time, right? We have to turn, we have to make a T, we have to bring a lot of branches, actually. So this is one of the inherent, um, I mean, the source. Inherent source in the sense, the source that originates from the flow, flow of the fluid. And if there is uh, multiple branches are coming and joining to uh, into the header, and uh, uh, of 10 branches, 5 will have flow and 5 will not have flow. This gives an imbalanced distribution into the header. So this also creates a flow turbulence. So flow turbulence is basically uh, because of the inherent nature of the flow actually. So basically we have to design the piping in such a way to handle the, the flow turbulence. Generally the, the first step for uh, the, to minimize the flow turbulence is the process design. And then it comes to the mechanical design. Now let's go to the third point. The third point is that unsupported span. Unsupported span is one of the key factor for vibration source. Imagine if your uh, uh, line is not supported uh, properly, you can expect a vibration in that particular portion because the span uh, of a particular piping system is calculated based on the various uh, factors. So one of the factor is uh, vibration also. So if you don't provide uh, the pipe support at uh, appropriate uh, pipe span, then definitely there will be a source of vibration because the pipe is going to move uh, where it is not supported properly. Now let's go to the fourth one. The fourth one is the control valves. See, imagine control valves are valves which has a, a difference in uh, pressure uh, at the upstream and the downstream. And um, uh, the difference in the flow of, uh, properties at the upstream and downstream. Uh, the, for example, the flow properties at the upstream of a control valve may not be the flow properties at the downstream. That is because of various other reasons or other inherent reasons of the control valve. But we have to understand in this way that control valves are the source of vibration because of this, uh, the property difference of the fluid that is caused because of the operating philosophy of the control valve. So whenever you have a control value in your system, you we have to be really cautious about the pipe supports. Now let's go to the, the next one. Next one is the slux and surge. Generally, we can hear this slux are in two phase flow lines, such as the steam lines, where uh, you will have uh, the one third of the line with the condensate and the rest with the uh, steam gases. And there could be other uh, lines as well, the gas lines where you find the slugs actually. These slugs will uh, travel across the piping and it will hit all the elbows or all the change of direction. So this is one case actually. And the surge is because of, say for an example, the line is continuously operating and you have a valve in between. Suddenly if you close the valve, what happens? This back pressure will generate a wave kind of a thing and this will hit almost all the elbows and which is again going to cause a vibration like that. So this is another type of vibration source. Now let's go to the last one is the weak structural design. Uh, if the structure is really weak, if the structure is not capable to handle the piping system because structure has to be designed strong only then you can have the uh, piping but it is not another way uh, like a structure could be designed uh, uh, with uh, too much integrity and too much uh, uh, strength because if you are going to increase the design unnecessarily your cost is going to uh, really go high so it's better to uh, design the structure with an uh, economic um, uh, aspect also but at the same time the first thing it has to meet the the minimum piping design criteria so structure should be designed to handle all those things actually so the very intent of this um, topic is that we have to aware about the different kind of vibration source so these are the different kind of vibration source i know because most of the piping engineers or piping design engineers who are working in this particular field do not get this opportunity to learn about it so I hope that this video will really help you to understand at least conceptual wise 
Uh, let me see if um, as possible I will try to put more, more videos on vibration in the coming days but not guaranteed because we have to touch upon various other topics also. And the next topic is mitigation plan. Mitigation plan is nothing but how to rectify the vibration in the piping system, how to address and how to solve this vibration issue in the piping system. So over here the first method we can see we can call as a very simple method or a primary method we should employ is that the method through stress analysis uh, using CZ2 software because in CZ2 software there is a utility where uh, you can do a model analysis uh, in order to limit the frequency. The limiting the frequency in the sense you have to uh, push all the frequency above 4 hertz because it is uh, absolutely uh, safe uh, if you uh, limit the frequencies above 4 hertz. Uh, because uh, the lesser frequencies are considered to be more uh, dangerous because the in case of lesser frequency the movement of the piping will be more but i'm not saying at higher frequency the movement of the piping will be less but it is uh, a general practice that uh, if you uh, push almost all the frequencies above uh, 4 hertz there will not be any critical piping movements so that is what we are going to address over here so you can consider in this way the first method is through pipe stress analysis where the intent of the, uh, the, 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 the solution is to push all the vibration above the 4 hertz actually so that there will not be any major critical vibrations in the piping system. Now let's move on to the second method. The second method is a more practical method from it which has to be executed from field. We have to take the dimensions, we have to take the I mean readings from the field. We have to take the uh, vibration readings using some uh, sophisticated instruments where we can take the vibration with respect to the frequency and displacement. So these readings will help you to address where uh, the vibration is more and where the vibration is less. So you will be able to plot a graph in such a way that you can find this um, uh, piping has more vibration and the other piping does not have. So the finally the intent is that identify the area where you have more vibration and provide addition, additional supports. Either you will modify the existing supports or uh, you will introduce a new supports. So that is the very intent of the second method actually. Now let's go to the third method. The third method is to revise the design because the reason why I am saying is that see vibration generally occurs because of the faulty design. So if the design is 100% right so there will not be any vibration. But when we talk about design, design is not actually need to be started from zero. So as I told you, there could be many uh, factors actually. That is what the first uh, method you have to follow with pipe, pipe stress analysis. Uh, let's say for an example, if you could solve it, then it's done, right? Now, uh, the, if uh, you cannot solve it using the first method, now then we will go to the second method. By second method, you take a readings and solve it. If you are not able to solve the vibration from uh, first method and second method, then only you will look into the revising your design. Revising your design, it has to be started from the process, then mechanical, piping, structures and everything. So this is what it is. So here what we try to uh, um, uh, what you call, uh, implement is that to develop the more flexible uh, piping in such a way you can uh, provide sufficient supports and you can um, uh, provide uh, more flexibility uh, so that the, the, the impact of vibration will be less actually. So this is the three uh, methods that we generally employ in order to address this vibration issue. So I guess that this video has helped you to understand the basic uh, concept and uh, the impacts and uh, the root causes and the uh, a mitigation plan uh, which has to be employed during this um, uh, problem solving method actually. If you have any more questions you can always rise in my um, um, comment section. I will be ready to respond to you and um, if you have um, any other um, clarifications about my course also you can put it and I will be able to um, um, respond to you. So I hope that this video has helped you to understand the basics of piping vibration. So thank you for watching my channel and thank you for supporting me. I will meet you in another fantastic video. Until then, bye from Subhash Chandran. Please subscribe to my channel if you like my channel and the contents that I am making actually. Thank you so much.